on 97.3 City FM. This is Ghana's number one radio station. Yes, my name is Kwame Dehazi, and today I'm having an exclusive interview with Mark Anthony Myrie, popularly known in the music industry as Buji Banteng. Yes, sir. Yes, my brother. How are you? It's a pleasure we to be on the program. We are all so great. Ghana is so privileged to have you today on the number one radio station right here in Ghana. And we are happy to be speaking to you about um, the 25th anniversary of Tell Shiloh. Yes, my brother. I want to say enough respect goes out to the Ghanaian family and I want to wish everyone well. The family of the first president also, Mr. Rollins, I want to wish his family well. You know, Ghana go through a whole heap of things right now and a whole heap of transition. I want to big respect and big up my family over there. You know what I mean? Make sure I give them their respect. But the 25th anniversary of Till Shiloh is rather epic. Yes, and it, um, it displays the culmination of 25 years of work which proves and stand up to the test of time, undeniably so. And I'm just happy and proud that I was able to tap into my creative consciousness to create such a body of work that can still represent itself to this time. Nice one. Nice one. When you come to Ghana, right here in Ghana, since the release of Till Shiloh Till Now, it's become one of the greatest reggae albums that music lovers love to jam to. Talk about uh, Not An Easy Road, Medra, and all the great songs on that particular album. Now, taking us through uh, down memory lane, 25 years since this great album, what fondest memories can you share with us um, since you released this album? There, there, there are numerous memories and I have to drag my mind 25 years back in the past to create or to recreate some of them, but there are some that stood out in, uh, immensely. The creative process, working with numerous producers like Bobby Digital and Steely and Cleavy, who are no longer with us, may God bless them. Those were memorable moments that I'll forever treasure. Working with Dave Kelly on um, Wanna Be Loved was also mm -hmm. an epic. But what stood out for me monumentally was Till Shiloh. Until Shiloh, I produced my very first song. And if you look at the record, you see a song called It's Not an Easy Road, which was produced yeah, and by... and that is my Mark personal Myrie. favorite. That is my personal so, favorite. Yes, that was my contribution from an artistic and a creative musical perspective as a producer. Mm -hmm. to this record and it was my first pro full production I mean I used to do stuff for other people but I never done it for myself I always allow myself to be the tool of the producer so when I made this song I realized wow it's great so it was that, that was one of the moments that continually stood up because the pushback I received from prominent people who wanted me to actually sing this song on their label was not nice but when I did it on my label the pushback was immense. So I stood my ground and I went forward to show them, hey, this is my truth. And I stood on my square. So that was one of the memorable moments, among many others. Yeah, it's not an easy road, brother. Now, let, let me ask you now, when you take that particular Till Shiloh album, there are great other great songs like Medra on there. What was the inspiration behind Medra, for example? Medra, Medra was a song penned while I was on tour in to in Japan. I was in a province called Takamatsu. Mm -hmm. And I was I finished the concert and we came back to the hotel and we sat in the in the hallway. It was me, Winnie One and then Frankie Sly, we were in Asia and, and I was on tour. And when we called Jamaica, we heard that Panet was killed. Mm -hmm. Now Panet was a good friend of ours and a, a real Mohican for the dance hall, you know, because what's happening you now in the dance hall is not what it used to be. It has become rather well refined and rather ultra polished. Panet okay. Panet was one of the unpolished individuals that represent the true essence of what dance hall means, you know. Anyway, it was gone down. And I was all the way in Asia and I sat in the hallway of the, um, the hotel and I was just inspired. And I started writing Murder of the Blood is on your shoulder. And we are came to Jamaica like three months later. <laughs> I went to the to Marvel the community where Pan reside and there was a song playing by the name of Black Scorpio, owned by Jack Scorpio. And I took the microphone, you know, and big respect to the massive and big respect to all the crew and Yeah man. I draw for the Far East rhythm and when I put it on the Far East rhythm, his peer gunshot start fire. So we know right there and then that this song was, was, was touch a nerve. You know, so 
that was the inspiration, the death wow. of Panic inspired that great song. And the death of countless others too, because it also create wow. some mm -hmm. semblance of, of peace where the gun violence was concerned in Jamaica, because you no, know, every man started to do an introspection. So for some time we had calm and, 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 and tranquility and that looms over the island and we were able to create music and spiritual attributes and music were to uplift the whole nation. Yeah, but it all spanned from that tragic incident. So yeah, all that the wickedness come good, you know? Yeah, man. Now let's let's talk about let's talk about why we are celebrating 25 years of Till Shiloh. Now we know that you have great albums. You have other great albums. And uh, even prior to the release of Till Shiloh, you've had Voice of America, Mr. Mention, Stamina Daddy, and all that. But why are we dedicating some time to celebrate 25 years of the release of Till Shiloh? How is that special? In Shiloh, this Shiloh marks a turning point in my career from a dancehall hardcore DJ to one who exposed views on global and global social political issues mm -hmm. on a more wider purview and also my transformation and my realization and acceptance of my blackness as a Rasta man and as an African. So this music give you this record gives you songs like Till I'm Late to Rest. Yeah, which 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 speaks of our our African heritage because we I am originally my my tribe is the Maroons yeah yeah so we see them a compound where you have in a Ghana you see them a compound we have out here the same rice and peas that we cook in Jamaica is the same wachi you cook there in Ghana in Ghana so yeah so we know that we know that the link is one so we have exposes who's and make people know that even though we are marooned on an island i cannot give up my continent you know yeah so the album is a transformational body of work that um is also a time marker which shows the growth and the transition within butch musical career from one genre mm -hmm. seamlessly into another so it is also important for the industry the reggae music fraternity because it marks a milestone where reggae music is concerned in, in terms of a young man coming up and paying all to, to the, re, the real authenticity of the music, yeah, which man. is reggae. Yeah, man. So the album is also laced with those flavors to give you variety. So there's a lot of things that we, what, reason why we must celebrate it. And for your own personal reasons too, because there are songs in it that anyone and everyone can identify with. So you are actually adding three more songs to the 17 that were released on the Till Shell album 25 years ago. So we're going to have like 20 on this LP. Why the decision to add three songs to the, the, the ones that we had or we have on the original, if you like, Till Shallow album? Well, just from a level from, from of music standpoint, I don't think it would be iry to just give the massive 25 years the same set of songs. Just line it up and give them something extra. So what you have actually done, you get a remix of I Wanna Be Loved, and then okay. you get a remix of me playing the guitar solo, playing wow. uh, Miss Natalie Easy Road, and then you get a brand new, well, well, I said brand new song, which was never released on the album, but, but which was made for that project called Coming at the Dance which is a dance hall song where timeless also. So we're making sure that the masses, you know, get something extra. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Wow. Would you describe Till Shiloh as your best album ever? Would you say this is the best well, I, audio I, I, that I've I, ever, I, no, ever released? Well, two things. I'm not that egotistical. And, and next thing is my best is yet to come. I continue working. I would say Till Shiloh was given some of the most astounded level of promotion at any of my previous records as I've ever received. But um, besides the one um, Upside Down, which is my most recent work. Yeah. With, you understand? So given that volume of promotion and that volume of um, attention that it received, it went, it, was, it went far across the globe and attract many people because the musical content itself was rather potent. But nevertheless, I don't see myself as um, limiting myself as saying that was my best work ever. Because we are black people and we cannot make put label on us and we cannot put label on ourselves. You understand? We are yeah. the greatness still live. As long as you walk the face of the earth, you do not stand on it. We stand on our feet. So all things are possible. We don't make music for earthly accolades and for man to say this is this is his best. 
I want more importantly for ones to, to learn and grasp the fundamental of what is being transmitted to them through the music. This is the great healer, the teacher, the great restorative force. Right. So if we get right. caught up into, into what the Babylon system wants to be to caught up in, then we start finding ourselves killing music. Then we say this this is old or this dead. Mm -hmm. We must never lose those little idioms when we're discussing music because music alone shall live and it's going to teach them all a lesson. So I don't believe in saying this is my best work or my better work. I keep working for the people as a servant. Great. You talked about the Upside Down 2020 album, which has already earned some nomination in the Grammys. How does that make you feel? Well, it's a, it's a huge accomplishment whenever your, your music and your work is looked upon or your body of work is perceived by any society, whether it is whatever society it is. But nevertheless, I do not work for men's earthly reward. I never did because the same mouth that says yay is the same mouth that says yay. My thing supersede all award that man have to offer. I work for a heavenly, a heavenly award, not men's award because men are men see us, you know? Wow. Wow. I don't know if you've observed the current wave of dancehall and reggae um, blowing all over the world, including West Africa, for example. If you have, what do you make of this new wave of reggae dancehall uh, vibe all over the continent of Africa? It is a beautiful thing. Let me tell you something. I remember when I came to Ghana, yeah. I had a hard time explaining to my brothers over there dancehall. <laughs> There was Kofi on the radio and there was a couple more guys who understood the dancehall essence. And I mean, because guys used to come in from London, New York and so forth. But the vast population had no concept of what dancehall really was about. Now, we have come forward in 2000 and, 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 and we have seen a great merge to place where our brothers created a dancehall genre idealistic only to themselves, secular only to themselves, but using the very African essence that we brought across the, can the ocean. And this is our link. This is our bridge now. But I don't see the bridge building. I, see for I only see divides. This is supposed to be the great connector. You have now come into your expressive self in an idiom with the world and even us in the Caribbean. And we are now speaking the same language, using different uh, instrumentation, but we are now yeah. connecting at the same wavelength. But we are not truly connecting because we are failing in the connection as human beings, as artists and artists and artists. Yeah, I want my brother to make to know this. I don't want the African artists who are now coming to dance hall to make the same mistake. And they're gonna say, What mistake is Budget talking about? This music was originally designed and come around to teach those who was not in the know. To help those to see a different view of things, not only in dancing and singing and, and promulgating sex, because there are positive attributes to dance art. Do not let it get to you. And do not let it fool you into thinking that you can disrespect the people who made you into the so-called superstar that you think you are. Because there's no such thing. We're just musicians who are blessed. And it is written in the Bible, singers and players of instruments went before. It never says superstars. Those are coin words by the system for brainwash, you know, because a man is just a man. So when we realize these things, you now we're moving one accord and make sure the music helps with people. We don't show off on our people because it's going to bring us to utter ruin and disgrace. We become someone touchable to our people, someone lovable for the people, someone reachable, someone they can come to, talk to, and you know what I mean? Because every man thinks his burden is there, is there, there is. But you don't know what the other person is going through. So you don't yeah. take the music that God has blessed you with to become a weapon over the people. To act as if you are high and mighty over them. That is my message to my brothers over there. And let us have unity. I see no reason why you in Ghana, my brothers in Nigeria, some in Sierra Leone, why we cannot come together and create our own African fest. We, should, we no longer need a middle man who is white to make the thing right. The some people have criticized the, the dancehall, reggae dancehall musicians we have right here in Ghana for uh, fusing local African rhythms into reggae dancehall music. For example, if you talk about um, Shatawale, Stoneboy, Samini, the Jupiters and the rest who try to uh, fuse local what is African new? rhythms. What is new under the face of the sun? My brothers 
have fused the African heritage with their last brothers over here in the Western world, with what they have found and created to keep themselves occupied while we are, we are disconnected from our language, our culture, our food, our people. What is strange about that? That, that, is, not, that is not nothing new. And they have not done anything wrong. The world go on because of innovation and creativity that flows just like the breeze that blows. Yeah. The world go on and people are inspired. So should we keep our head in a box and be not inspired because that's the way others want us to be? Then, when we, then we shall always be the person who our, our, our headmasters in Europe and America and all these <laughs> countries you know, want us to be. We have to become free thinkers and that is what the world fear. I don't see nothing wrong with it I and mean, I don't see them as everybody come and take from reggae. Did they complain when the Americans and all those nice white boys with them long hair sing reggae music? Nobody no complain. No one complain. So why should you complain if my brothers who look like me take up the music? Right. They shouldn't be a complaint. But this is how we are. We have been trained to hate each other's progress. And in fact, that's what we are. Enemies of progress. Now let, let me let me ask you. You you've been away for about eight years. Uh, would you want I to share with us? I wasn't away. Speak the truth. <laughs> okay, so you were you were you've been you were in prison actually for eight years. Could you yes. share with us the, the experience that you you went through and the life changing lessons that you learned through that particular incident? Life changing lessons that the world is run by wicked and bloody and deceitful men who's willing to destroy you and create a narrative that they push through their mainstream media to fuck us up. Now, let me tell you this. It doesn't matter where you come from. They put Jesus Christ in jail too. They put most of our great men them in jail. Some of them shoot them out of the sky, out of them jet. Some of them destroy them through pies. Some of them send assassins and kill them. Nothing is strange. We're not asking anybody for their sympathy because we are revolutionary and we know the struggle. It is you who need to wake up and realize the struggle is real and most of what you're hearing is fake. We so that's the most important lesson you need to learn mm -hmm. because not, they, they, they have seen what I have made out of, you know. Now they're coming for you. We right here in Ghana can't wait to actually have a feel of the, the LP for the um, Till Shiloh album, if you like, the 25th anniversary celebration. But uh, we want to know after the release of this EP, are there going to be any other special activities to mark the celebration, if there are? There are going to be numerous activities to mark the celebration because it is a, a moment that deserves to be celebrated. You know what I mean? And for the most important thing is that we are here in this Iowa and we're buried alive to come and see what the Most High has done. Yes, and many eyes are seeing what the Most High has done and let us all say God is good. Great one there. When is Ghana going to see you here again? Well, if you don't know, I have been in Ghana many a time. Since the COVID, I haven't been there, but my family still resides here. My little, little princess, Amara, she's still there, you know what I mean? And her, her mom is still there. God, God bless Auntie Lydia. I've gone home, but everyone is still there. So I will come visit them soon. Soon? How, how soon are we going to see you? I could have never <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> You know what, I mean? <laughs> what man plan until the rolling plan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, it's been it's been so great having you right here on the show. Yes, it this is a beautiful guy to speak to you, my brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And uh, we we are we right here at ninety seven point three City FM in Accra. We are so grateful for your time. Today. I want to be up the massive in Accra. I want to be up the massive in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. I want to be up my friend and run a cantonment and like East Legon, West Legon. I want to big up on my bridge in the motor with the place named Sakumono. Sakumono, yeah, man. Tema, Tema. Yeah, you know man. get my fish. You know what I mean? I yeah, man. Everybody, I'm going to take care of myself and all is well, my people in Africa, in Ghana. Both thank you, them. thank you, thank you. And we hope to do this some other time. Thanks so much for your time. The Bujibantan. Respects. 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 Respects.